are in the New Jersey Pine Barrens enjoying a nice peaceful ride again because that's where we seem to always wind up. Got backpack with me today and we are celebrating the one year anniversary of owning a Harley Davidson Ultra Limited. Our first Harley I might add. So we kind of wanted to go over the pros, the cons, the good, the bad. Um, give you a little back history. We had a Suzuki Intruder 1500 before we owned this bike. Um, affectionately referred to as Tipitina. We rode that bike a lot. Uh, just got to the point where we were riding it um, just frankly to a level that we couldn't, uh, it just wasn't comfortable anymore. We rode about 175 miles on that bike too up and that was backpack's limit for uh, really being able to, to ride on it. And uh, one of our last rides we had, she could barely get off the bike. It was just brutal. It, it just wasn't built for those kind of rides. And um, we walked into a local Harley dealer dealership. They were having a sale. Um, we wound up walking out with the 2014 Ultra Limited. All right, yeah, she pushed the sale. Um, I guess they say happy wife, happy life is the saying. And uh, yeah, that's true. But the truth be told, it was all about her butt. For butt ain't happy, she ain't happy. And if she ain't happy, I ain't happy. And I guess we ain't riding it, we ain't happy. But, um, so we bought this bike and we've been um, we've been really pleased with it it's been a it's been a very interesting adventure um with this bike it's really taken us to ride a lot further than we ever had two up um we've done a three-day trip with it we've ridden 400 miles then our longest ride so we rode 400 miles that was our longest ride two up one day and that was you know substantially more than the 175 that we could do before and you know the next day you could get up and you could do another 400 miles so we've really been pleased with owning the harley dealership the dealership we bought the bike from absolutely sucks i will never go back there um they were great until we bought the bike and then they were just worthless uh we had some issues so we started going to brian's harley davidson big shout out to you guys in langhorne pennsylvania they've been fantastic they've treated us uh with respect and they've been very helpful in trying to help us make this bike the way we wanted it. Uh, and in that, you know, we've sent a considerable money in that dealership. And that's really been the, uh, what for us owning a Harley has been about is making it our own. So the first things that we did, um, gosh, I don't remember what the first things we did. The first thing we did was add the Willie G skull cap, the gas cap rather. And I got to tell you what, that's like 900 horsepower right there. Cause you gotta have a Luigi skull if you're gonna ride a Harley. Second thing that we did after that was we purchased Legend suspensions. We have Legend heavy duty suspension in the rear and Legend suspension in the front. Absolutely night and day difference for touring. The air suspension that comes in this bike absolutely sucks. There's just no other way around it. You hit potholes, it bottoms out constantly. The bike also doesn't nosedive when you, uh, when you stop, which is really nice to up. Backpack's not sliding into me all the time. And it's just a lot more comfortable ride. The second big improvement we did, this is really for my comfort. We added fat bag of 12 inch bars with the cool little peaks. Cause you know, you gotta make it your own. Um, it's really made the bike a lot more comfortable for me. I found with the standard bars, my arms were at lock. So it was a very uncomfortable to ride. It made it very difficult to ride it at um, well, slow speeds any sort of real low speed maneuvers, I always felt like the bike was gonna tip over. So that's been a huge improvement. We've added the extended mirrors for the bike so I can see around backpack with no problem. And she can see traffic now too, which sometimes isn't the best. Um, <laughs> we've added custom dynamic uh, bag filler lights. We've added custom dynamic rear, rear tail lights. Um, I've been extremely impressed with them. They've uh, really easy to install, super bright. We have strobes on both the uh, tour pack and all the lights in the back. We're looking forward to uh, putting more lights on the back. We do have the Harley Davidson front light. That's the turn signal. We also added that when we bought the bike, not impressed. It's nowhere near as bright as the custom dynamics. If you see somebody that has the four lights in front custom dynamics on the bat wing, it's a significant difference. Uh, we've made some gear changes, obviously. What did we get? We got showy helmets. 
we've been extremely impressed with. They're great for touring. They're extremely comfortable. Um, and we got new headsets. We got j &M headsets. I can't say enough about those. The Harley Davidson headsets suck. I'm going to rant for a second here. The Harley Davidson sets are not 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter is the standard hole that they put in these helmets for uh, drop-in speakers. If you run the um, if you run the Harley Davidson speakers, you just wind up squishing your ears and having all kinds of issues. Um, so we got the new headsets. So that's made a huge difference. We've both gotten leather jackets because you know you got to be cool when you ride a Harley. And chaps, yeah, that's right. We got leather jackets and chaps. Um, we both had Olympia jackets before, and I don't have anything negative to say about Olympia. I think the Olympia gear is fantastic, but I will say that this has made a huge difference. I feel like this gives me more wind protection with leather, so I've been really happy with it, and the chaps are, are, are fantastic as well. Um, yes, Backpack doesn't feel like Ralphie's brother where her arms are all stuck out and she can't move because she has to layer up so much when she wears the Olympia jacket. So that's been a huge improvement. We both also have heated vests. If you haven't checked out that review, check it out in the uh, in the site. Oh look, there's a Harley rider. Let me wave to him. That's a joke. I waved to everybody except Can Ams. Mm -mm. You gotta have two wheels. We're gonna wave to you. Three if you're on a trike. We'll respect that. You get that wheel in the front now. We're not waving it. Sorry. Yeah, we did it once. It was uncomfortable. The whole ride home, I was no. It just felt awkward. I had to take a shower. Um, but yeah, the, the gears made a huge improvement. We've really been enjoying the bike. Um, like I said, we've had a, a fantastic relationship with our dealership. They, uh, they've lent us, yeah, that's right. They, uh, and in that they helped us find the perfect seat. We have now the Harley Davidson hammock seat on the bike. We also have the removable backrest. That's taken a little bit of getting used to for me. Um, the seat's still breaking in. I don't find the seat as comfortable as the demo seat that we chose, the takeout. But the demo seat was also for the non-Rushmore bikes. It was for the earlier bikes. And while it fit the bike with some finagling, it, I think that that seat's a lot more comfortable. The newer seat you lose for the rider, you lose that back lip that sort of supports your back. So you do need to go with a backrest. Um, but again, it's all about making it your own, and unfortunately, the, the, the reality of making it your own is it ain't cheap. Um, but it certainly is comfortable. But getting back to the dealer, we've been really impressed. Um, they've sort of welcomed us into the Harley-Davidson community, if you will, uh, really explained what we could do with the bike, helped us out to really make sure that what we were purchasing wasn't just throwing money at a problem. and. Um, spent the time to set the suspension up so it, it's perfect for us um and we got a lot of t-shirts now too right because if you have a harley davidson babe right you gotta have t-shirts yes yeah our son bought us um which harley david alamo harley davidson has uh, a shirt with the alamo on the back with uh with an armadillo riding a motorcycle, I have to put a picture up of it. It's pretty badass. It's uh, it's just cool. Yeah. So backpacks from Texas. She's from San Antonio, so it was kind of cool to have a have a jacket or a, sorry, a shirt from her local dealership. So that's been kind of neat. And, and like I said, we've really enjoyed the uh, community we made. I find for whatever reason, and and I don't know why this is, if you ride. If you go anywhere, whether you're on the bike or not, uh, generally though, we wear our Harley Davidson shirts or gear obviously on the bike, but um, people talk to you. It's really strange. You, you can go into a restaurant and people will just come up and start talking your ear off about their bike and asking you about your bike and um, what's that? <clears throat> yeah, and their parents have a Harley Davidson or their son has a Harley Davidson, so it, it's pretty neat. Uh, I'm not convinced that that's the only brand of motorcycle. We've owned uh, plenty of non Harley Davidson bikes before this, but I will say this is by far the um, the most comfortable and the most just, I, you hear people say it all the time, this bike has soul. This bike has that really great growl when you, uh, when you get on it. It's got Reinhardt pipes on it, four inches. 
So it, it's got some growl to it. It has character. It has personality to it. Um, and you can sort of shape that personality with your accessories, which I think is really cool. Where... <laughs> yes. I don't know if you can hear her, but that you can definitely be seen more on this bike. The uh, Daymaker lights are fantastic um, to the point that if I run with the, the driving lights on, people will flash their high beams at me during the day because they think I have my high beams on and they're being blinded. That's how bright these lights are. Um, I really, really enjoy this bike. Um, from a safety aspect, yes, it's great. We have the ABS now, which is fantastic. Gives you a little bit more security. Um, visibility. Okay, go. Well, we were talking about visibility, and the one thing that I find that's interesting and quite frankly disappointing is they they go on and on about this Rushmore project and how Rushmore has changed this bike, and it's it's got better, you know, it's got the nav and it's got better handling and it's got a better, you know, seat seating stance and all that but the one thing that they don't mention is they put daymaker lights in the front fantastic they put led tour uh, led lights in the tour pack everything else is a standard incandescent bulb it boggles my mind that if you're selling a premium bike you're putting incandescent bulbs on it and then mixing it with uh led bulbs it just doesn't make sense to me in this day and age um, granted, it's a 2014, but still, if you were going to do it, do it. Um, the custom dynamic lights on this bike are just absolutely insane. The uh, strobe pack, I highly recommend people back off when you hit the brakes um, to the point where they really will back off and you will never see them again in your rear view mirror. Um, they're really, really bright and they're really reasonably priced. They're easy to put in and um, it certainly gives you a lot more comfort when you ride as far as security and safety. I'm trying to think of some of the other things that we've added. Well, I guess the next question, though, would be what do we plan to add? What's the next thing we're going to do to the bike, babe? So you want to get grips and a paint job. All right. That sounds like it'll be cheap. Yeah, we want to get a, a Rick Rack bag for the top. Looks like it would be uh, a really good bag to have when you tour. I have no idea where I am. Um, and I don't know if you heard her earlier say that we were looking at getting different heated grips. These are the standard rubber grips on the bike. They're fantastic. They're extremely odd. Um, but they do, um, they do tend to warp under heat. So they, they, they don't look all that great. They, they feel great and they certainly heat great, but they don't look all that great. So we were thinking about um, replacing them with uh, nicer ones, some of the aftermarket ones. I don't know, there's so many different collections that they have out. We have no idea where we are right now. So we've gone over the positives of the bike. Um, I think some of the negatives to this bike, as I said, is out of the box, if you will. It needs a lot of customization, and, and I guess that's really what Harley is all about. It's about making the bike your own. But um, like I said, the, the lights are, are really disappointing. Even when you get the after, well, they're not even aftermarket. Hang on. So what I was saying is some of the negatives that I found with this bike is the out-of-box experience really needs a lot of customization. The, uh, like I said, the suspension for us didn't fit. Um, the bars weren't that comfortable at all. Um, I feel much more secure and I feel like I have much more control over the bike with these higher bars. Yeah, the suspension was crap. I mean, there's just no other way around it. Um, Yes, the nosedive on the bike was absolutely ridiculous. The uh, <coughs> Having the link suspension, the only way I can describe it is it always felt like you were using the front brake and nothing else. 
Um, I'm sorry, it has link suspension, but that's how it felt with the standard front end shocks. You'd hit the you'd hit the brakes, rear the front, and it would just it would nosedive under uh, under stopping. So that really was just um, that was just horrible. <coughs> So it's definitely, I, I think that the, um, the upgrades that we did and having a dealership that would work with us and us doing an awful lot of research has really paid off into making the bike our own. Um, and then buying gear that really fits you, fits you properly, that's comfortable, I think is, is one of the biggest things. Um, oh, that's what I forgot to talk about, the cruise control. Cruise control is pretty cool. I really do like the cruise control on the bike. It uh, first time I've ever had cruise control on a bike. It's great for the highway or even when you're blasting through the pines and there's uh, kind of nothing around you and you just kind of want to chill. Uh, gives your hand a break too, which is nice. So I guess my question would be, what things have you done to your bike that you would stand by? You know, everyone has their thing. I'm curious to see what people that own these. Um, Rushmore Ultras have done to their bike and what's made it um, unique for them. Oh, that's what we forgot to add. I want to add stage one to it. I want to get a little bit more power out of it. I wouldn't mind doing stage two as well for the torque to uh, get a little bit more torque out of the bike. Although that being said, I don't ever feel that it's underpowered, but I do feel that it would be, uh, it'd be cool to just, you know, it's like anything, have a little bit more power, get a little more growl out of it which I think would be really cool. Um, <clears throat> but to her point, the bike is really great when you can put in uh, helmets, your cameras, your rain gear, your chaps. You don't feel like you're, you kind of have to really think about what you bring. If you need to bring some stuff, you bring it with you. Um, so that, that's really been great. We, um, we have the inserts for the bags that, that fit the bag perfectly. So you pop them out, you take them with you into the hotel. So that's really nice. It's a really nice feature to have um, when you travel. You don't have to, you know, unload the bike. You throw your helmets in the bike. You take your bags in the hotel and you're, you're good to go. For any, uh, anyone in the military watching, we are riding pretty much around McGuire Joint something operation. For, it's McGuire Fort Dix, they're now a joint base. This is a really fun area to ride in the pines. The pines are great when it's in this weather, it's like 70 day. Um, any hotter, you kind of get cooked because there is no sun cover. You're just out there. A bunch of shooting ranges, which I think is kind of neat. But uh, it's funny, if you ride through the pines, I don't know why, but you always wind up here. You, you, don't, you don't ever seem to not wind up at McGuire. Um, so that's kind of uh, just throwing it out there. If uh, any of you folks are in the military, you'll know where we are. Now this will be probably coming out next Monday, but last night I was on Gorilla Biker's live podcast. So big shout out to my boy Gorilla Biker. That was fantastic. I got to chat with Patty Outback, Dad Mad. Um, there's a bunch of YouTubers that were in that chat. It was um, really cool, but I actually got to be on the video portion of it and talk to those guys. And they're, they're stand-up guys. They're really fantastic. So if you haven't checked out Patty Outback's channel, check it out. Gorilla Biker, Dad and Matt. I'm all going to put links to everybody in there. In the bottom of this video as well as the link from the, uh, the live podcast or web stream, whatever you call it, uh, if you want to check it out. So that, that was really neat. That's the first time I've done that. It's, it's really neat to meet those guys. If you haven't seen Dad and Matt's channel, check it out. He rides with his daughter. His daughter films on the back of their sports shirts. It's pretty cool. They're really good people, as are our Gorilla Biker and, and Patty Outback. 
But that was really neat, and I think that that gets back to what we were talking about earlier with the Harley, is it just seems to bring out a great community of people. And maybe that's more because we ride more and we've met people because some of those people don't ride Harley. So it's not so much a Harley thing. I think it's just that, I guess maybe owning this bike has opened up our passion to ride more. And in doing that, we've met a lot of people both um, online and in the real world that I think has really been great. Um, we've done some charity rides, which have been fun, although a little scary. <laughs> Not a big fan of riding with uh, people I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, it's an experience for sure. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the Fine Barrens. This is a great place to ride. It's very quiet. Um, today's Easter Sunday, so nobody's out. Um, or not out on the back roads, at least. Everybody's playing tourist on the main roads. But um, in the state of the world, it's really nice to be out and on two wheels and just get a little fresh air. Um, I hope, and I've said this before, I hope everyone's staying healthy and safe. Um, we were actually talking this morning, I think that the toll of the coronavirus in what it's gonna take in people's mental health and the amount that that's gonna affect folks is gonna be more overwhelming than the disease itself. We're just not, people that are meant to be inside. Um, the world's just changed. We went to get uh, we went to get food for our kitten, you know, and you have to go in and you're wearing a mask and you've got to wear gloves and there's the stress of, you know, making sure you have all that stuff. It's just not the way we're used to living. Um, I know that they say that that's hopefully we're at the apex and that's going to be over soon. But um, wow, the world's definitely going to have changed when that's over. It's really, uh, it really goes to show you what, uh, how much you take for granted and how thankful you are just to have the freedom to go out and, and do what you want, and sit in a restaurant, have a really good meal. I work from, I work from home full time, backpack uh, doesn't, but she does now. So it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a change for everybody, both good and bad. It's nice to always be home with her and then, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure she's going to kill me in my sleep soon. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. <laughs>